Someday soon, our smartphones and home computers may be able to download Sharknado 12 in 4K in less than 25 seconds. Not that anyone downloads anymore, but you get the point. What sorcery is this, you may ask? The miracle of 5G cellular networks. It's not just a snazzy name, it's actually the fifth generation of wireless networking technology. 5G is the next generation cellular system that could hypothetically give us data speeds of a gigabit or more per second. That's faster than fiber optic at home, folks. The promise is that 5G will bring speeds around 10 gigabits per second to your phone and home wirelessly. That's more than 500 times faster than the typical 4G speeds on today's phones, and 10 times faster than my AT&T fiber home broadband service. That is ridiculously fast. And supposedly it's got more bandwidth, meaning that it can connect more devices simultaneously, which is important as your car, your home security system, refrigerator, hot tub, oven, thermostat, and toilet probably all connect to the internet already. And it's already here. Verizon launched its 5G network at the start of April 2019. It's currently only available in limited locations, and there are only a few phones currently available to use on the new 5G network. We've heard that some people actually got speeds of up to 1.5 gigabits per second in Chicago. However, there is a downside. 5G coverage is patchy AF. In the beginning of this rollout, speeds will probably range from 200 megabits per second to 550 megabits per second, still quicker than 4G, but not the 10G you're waiting for. 5G uses technology called millimeter wave, radio waves that have wavelengths measured in millimeters rather than centimeters like 4G is now. This means they have very high frequencies, like 30 gigahertz and potentially higher. Back in July 2016, the FCC freed up four times the amount of flexible mobile use spectrum. European Union lawmakers agreed to open up the 3.6 and 26 gigahertz bands by next year. Like the old school 4G, cellular providers will use towers to broadcast these waves. But you'll need all new antennas and hardwares to use the 5G millimeter waves. Millimeter waves are known for being tricky. They don't travel too far because they are easy to block. Like the old iPhone 4, if you put your hand in the wrong place, you will completely kill the signal. 5G broadcasts bounce off trees, buildings, and fortunately, they bounce off most people too. One of the ways companies like Qualcomm is addressing these issues is by using multiple antennas in smartphones, so your phone can switch to another one when one is blocked. Now companies like Qualcomm can sell six antennas per phone instead of one. That's a nice profit, definitely a buy. To make it practical for mobile use, Carriers will need to deploy huge numbers of small access points in cities, instead of relying on a few big cell towers as they do today. Carriers may need 15 or 20 millimeter wave access points to cover an area currently covered by only two or three cell phone towers. And there's the rub. So carriers around the world are now turning to what's known as the mid-band of the wireless spectrum to fill in the gaps which includes many of the frequencies used by Wi-Fi routers and some mobile phone networks. It's not quite as fast as the high end of the spectrum because there's less bandwidth available, but signals can travel farther and more reliably, making it possible to blanket areas with coverage using large towers. The FCC has already approved proposals that would allow carriers to use some mid-band spectrum currently used for military radar and satellite communications. But the U.S. already lags behind South Korea and China, which has already reserved large swaths of mid-band spectrum for 5G. The fear is that if China is the first to roll out 5G, its huge tech industry will create the next global mobile platform, and that doesn't bode well for U.S. companies. 5G right now could also give China a huge edge in the AI race. More devices connected to more networks would mean more data, and that data can help train algorithms which leads to smarter AI applications. Consumer advocates worry that the rush to 5G is undermining public oversight of the wireless industry. Remember when the FCC gutted its net neutrality protections in 2017, arguing that fewer regulations would lead to more investment in 5G? 
In 2018, the FCC also voted to override state and local regulations governing the placement of wireless equipment in the name of helping carriers build 5G networks faster. This might be troubling to low-income or rural areas because no oversight might mean those areas won't get 5G coverage. Other consumer groups have voiced concern about potential health hazards. Many of these concerns are over 5G's use of the higher energy millimeter wave radiation. There's often confusion about the term radiation. All light is radiation because it is simply energy moving through space. It's only the ionizing radiation that's dangerous because it can break chemical bonds in your body. Ionizing radiation is the reason we wear sunscreen outside because short wavelength ultraviolet light from the sky has enough energy to damage skin cells and your DNA. Millimeter waves on the other hand are supposedly non-ionizing because they have longer wavelengths and reportedly they don't have enough energy to damage cells directly. The only established hazard of non-ionizing radiation is too much heating. At higher exposure levels, radio frequency energy can indeed be hazardous, producing burns or other thermal damage. But these exposures are typically incurred only in settings very close to high-powered radio frequency transmitters, or sometimes in erroneous medical procedures. There are thousands of people who spend much of their working lives close to RF antennas and they seem to be fine. They believe it to be safe and their employers do too. The global race for 5G continues and top telecommunications companies are competing to develop the technology. And not only are there national security concerns, but now some public safety ones as well. 5G is ultra high frequency and ultra high intensity. The higher the frequency, the more dangerous it is to living organisms. And 4G LTE is already causing some outrage at a San Joaquin Elementary School in California after a fourth child has been diagnosed with cancer. Skeptics believe we're not sure about the effects of exposure to non-ionizing radiation just yet. They claim this radiation may still be responsible for a range of illnesses, from brain tumors to chronic headaches. Over the years, there have been thousands of studies investigating these concerns. In 2018, the National Toxicology Program released a decade-long study that found some evidence of an increase in brain and adrenal gland tumors in male rats exposed to the RF radiation emitted by 2G and 3G cell phones, but curiously not in mice or female rats. The animals were exposed to levels of radiation four times higher than the maximum permitted for human exposure. In the year 2000, Broward County Public Schools asked Bill P. Curry, a consultant and physicist, to study the potential effects of deploying wireless networks and computers in their schools. The technology, he reported back, was likely to be a serious health hazard. He summarized his most troubling evidence in a large graph titled Microwave Absorption in Brain Tissue, Gray Matter. In his research, Dr. Bill Curry looked at studies on how radio waves affect tissues isolated in the lab and misinterpreted the results as applying to cells deep inside the human body. This caused a widespread panic that still exists today. Subsequent scientists dispute Dr. Curry's report, stating his analysis failed to recognize the protective effect of human skin. At higher radio frequencies, the skin acts as a barrier shielding the internal organs, including the brain, from exposure. Dr. Curry belonged to a national group of wireless critics, and his two reports that he wrote for the Brower District soon began to circulate widely among industry foes. One reached Dr. David Carpenter, a highly credentialed dean and researcher who for decades had clashed with the science establishment on the health risks of radio waves. Dr. Carpenter stirred global controversy in the 1980s by asserting that high-voltage power lines could cause leukemia in nearby children. Federal researchers failed to find solid evidence to support the warnings. Dr. Carpenter more recently told RT America, a Russian television network, that the cell phones represented a dire health threat. He states the rollout of 5G is very frightening. No one is going to be able to escape the radiation.
His 2012 Bio-Initiative Report, which has since been updated, was prepared by 29 authors with 10 holding medical degrees and 21 PhDs. Dr. Carpenter's findings indicate there definitely is a strong correlation among RF exposure and health. His findings summarize several studies that report biological effects and adverse health effects relevant for cell towers, Wi-Fi routers, smart wireless utility meters, wireless laptops, baby monitors, cell phones, and cordless phones. The Bio-Initiative report gained worldwide notice, but some in mainstream science rejected its conclusions. Two Oxford University researchers described it as scientifically discredited. Business and government have always played a cat-and-mouse game. Regulation is expensive, we all prefer lower taxes, and companies find it extremely inconvenient and unprofitable when the government butts in. But think about it. We've learned asbestos is bad after many people died. Baby powder can cause cancer. Firestone tires, Ford Pintos, exploding airbags and cell phone batteries, data breaches, lead in city water systems. It seems that it's a lot cheaper to sell the heck out of something, make billions in profits, and let someone else worry about penance five years down the road, pretending you didn't know any better. The question is, do you volunteer to be a guinea pig? Me, I'm going to keep my 4G and fiber optic for as long as I can. There'll probably be a day when we'll all have to move to 5G, but hopefully they'll figure out if it's safe or not by then. For Computer Care, this is Chuck Fresh.